Welcome to Six Figure Souls, Doing Good and Making Money, the weekly podcast where I highlight entrepreneurs who have left the grind and designed businesses in alignment with who they are. This is a very special season nine where I'm interviewing my co-authors of our third collaborative book project, The Ultimate Guide Series. It's called Leaving Your Legacy. I'm your host, Camille Miller, a known business strategist and life accelerator. I'm founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership and the Soul Professional Society. I guess I should start saying also the Soul Professional Business School, which is a really excited new launch we've had. Um, Today I have with me Jacqueline Diaz, and she is an expert recruiter and passionate advocate for neurodiversity in the workplace. Thank you, Jacqueline, for being with us today. Hi, Camille. I'm so excited to be here today, and I'm so excited that we did this book collaboration, which is awesome. So I'm glad that we're here to talk about it. Awesome. Tell me, tell me and the listeners a little bit about your background and your work, and then we'll talk about why you decided to do the chapter with us. Uh, so I'm a native New Yorker. Um, I have been in um, leadership, recruiting, talent acquisition for over 20 years. I know I'm aging myself, uh, but I um, opened up, um, I co-owned a um, recruiting agency, a strategic talent acquisition and recruiting firm where we place top talent for employers throughout the U.S. And I am also the founder of the Steven Spectrum Career Project, Um, which helps um, the neurodivergent community um, find meaningful work in the uh, workplace um, in New York City. And of course, I'm a mom, (laughs) as you can hear in the background. Yeah, Yeah, and unfortunately, it was one of those days that, um, you know, that's one of the good things about working from home, but it's one of those days that um, I didn't have any here so she's kind of like excited I guess for me um but yeah uh I'm also the author of Jacob um Jacob's Melody uh, Harmony um in Autism which is a book that um tells a heartwarming story of an autistic boy that finds his voice uh through music so um I guess like my passion is really making everybody fit in, um, no matter if you're neurodivergent, no matter if you um, are different of color, speak a different language. Uh, I, I'm just like a uh, real passionate for diversity and inclusion. And um, I guess my work kind of surrounds that. I love that. Um, what made you decide to be a co-author and, and join our book collaborative? Well, um, I, I guess it's because um, to write about leaving your legacy, I think it's very important because I think that there's this misconception around there that leaving your legacy is leaving millions of dollars or yeah. some kind of inheritance, um, you know, uh, and I think that speaking to everybody as to how they can leave their legacy, that everybody can leave their legacy in different ways kind of spoke to me. Beautiful. So it doesn't sound like this was your first time writing since you have your other book out, but is this the first time maybe telling your story and making it so personal? Absolutely. Um, I love writing. I have a passion for writing. Um, But all through these years, it was kind of like hush hush because I didn't want to put my writing out there. And um, the first project was actually the children's book. And when I had the opportunity to tell my story and how it can resonate with other people, I said, why not? Right. Beautiful. And um, what was your feelings as you told your story so many times we ask people to tell their story and it's a very different way of writing you know when you're when you're kind of putting yourself out there uh and sometimes people have these aha moments or i know for myself when i wrote my story my in my original book it was literally the first time it was out there and it was such a letting go experience in a beautiful way, 
Like it was really help. And each chapter I've written since then has been the next chapter of that story. Like how I began to then getting successful. And now it's all about leaving your legacy and, and, um, you know, my imprint on the world. So what was that like for you to, to write your story? And did you have that aha moment or holy crap, or I never looked at it this way? Did it have any effect on you that way? Definitely. It's a whole rush of emotions, right? Because I think that it, like personally, in my opinion, I think it's easier to tell somebody else's story, right? Yeah. Because it's not you putting yourself out there. Um, and Agreed. it's kind of like, yeah, this is cool. Let's just tell that story. Um, but it was a rush of emotions uh, because it's like in, in a chapter or even in a full book, it's really hard to tell your full life story. So having a chapter to tell a piece of a story um, where um, something really um, emotional happened that, you know, changed the direction of where I was going. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, definitely but tears and anger and laughter. And, you know, this is all by myself. So I looked like a crazy woman while I was writing. But uh, yeah, like, I I'm so happy that I did it. And I really, really hope that this kind of like resonates with at least one person out there. It will. <laughs> <laughs> it will. Absolutely. I think that's the beauty about the book and how we do these collaboratives that it doesn't have to be read from cover to cover. Like you don't have to start at chapter one, but you should because it's my chapter. But you know, you can read them in yeah. any order and people could flip through and just like read the chapter titles and just be like, this, this is what I need to hear today. And just pick yeah. that, pick that piece. And, and I really do believe that these collaborative books tell so many different stories in different ways that it, it, there's an opportunity for everyone to connect to a story and see themselves in it. That's why I actually love doing the collaborative book model because of that, like just having a, a theme and, you know, there, there's an answer, I think, for everyone in that book or a story that resonates with that. I so, I so appreciate it. And I think your chapter was very inspiring and, yeah. and I love that you were a part of it. What was the experience of writing in the collaborative like for you? Um. So it's, it's weird because, uh, you know, like I said, um, I I love writing and I've always wrote um, wrote poems and little stories and um, tried to write books on my own. Um, but having to write with other people, um, it's very different because although we had we have separate chapters you want to make sure that the book kind of like flows in the same yeah. direction. And, yeah. and it's kind of hard to do that. Right. Um, so uh, I guess it just makes me feel that it helped me more as a writer and yeah. not only as a writer, but as a person, uh, because you want to understand under perspe other perspectives and you want to um, put yourself out there uh, without having to always think of like ridicule and because there's always going to be um, somebody commenting that's not too nice. Right? That's right. But being able to do that with everybody else, uh, it, it, it is life changing. And I'm definitely open to um, more writing in the future, but definitely open to um, more collaborations and I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful. I love, I, I, I love it. And, and I know the experience is, is different for everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about your chapter and some of the points that you talked about? Um, hold on, let me read your, your chapter is called neurodivergent, what you need to know about leaving your legacy. And I kind of, I kind of love that. Um, as a neurodivergent person myself, and I'm raising three other children that are also neurodivergent. And my whole thing is like, just lean into who you are and be authentic. Cause I think that's the beauty of it. 
Um, exactly. It might be a little easier as you get older, although those I've learned more about me when my kids were diagnosed and learned things. They're like, you know, this is hereditary. And I was like, I thought everyone was like this. I didn't think it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your chapter. Uh, so it really hones it's like yes it's um called neurodivergent right and um i wanted to specifically um speak to that audience but it is for everybody because i just want everyone to understand and i want everybody to um think about their legacy in the future and that it doesn't have to be these grand gestures and you can have challenges in life, whether they are um, physical or, uh, you know, or just like adversities that you have to get through uh, and you can still leave that legacy. Everybody thinks, like I said, it might be money or these grand gestures because you're like famous or have this type of person, um, uh, popularity or just drive this awesome car. But it's not about that. It's about, um, little things that you do in everyday life. Uh, so that's what the chapter is about. I speak a little bit about my story, um, you know, how I went through, you know, uh, being a neurodivergent and not even knowing it and yep. thinking like that I didn't fit in. And I'm like, hmm, you know, what's going on here? And then finally getting the diagnosis. Um, but how that put me on a path to where I am today. Yeah. Beautiful. Do you think that this chapter will be a start of a solo book or something bigger for you? Do you have dreams in that direction? Yeah, I do. I definitely want to do um, more collabs and um, I am currently working on a, another story I, I, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to put it as a book or collaborate with um, someone else, but I am working on a story um, about an, an autistic boy because that really resonates with okay. me. I want to make sure that um, kids out there are able to uh, read stories about inclusion. So, you know, when they're out there in everyday life, they're like, okay, I kind of know what this is about whether they're neurodivergent or not. But yes, definitely. I would love to write, um, a book on my own. It may take me a little bit more time, but this has inspired me to do more. Fantastic. Well, I so appreciate you being a part of the book, part of the podcast, part of the collaborative, like so many things. Yay. And um, I can't wait for everyone to be able to really appreciate your your writing. Uh, how can people get in touch with you if they um, are inspired like I was about your chapter and they want to learn more? Thank you. So they can definitely find me on LinkedIn, Jacqueline Diaz, or go to my website, Jackie Diaz. Um, but Jackie, I, you know, since I was a kid, I, I misspelled it and then I just left it like that. But Jackie is spelled J-A-K-E-E-D-I-A-Z.com. I love that. <laughs> and for those listening, the um, um, Jackie's information will be in our show notes. If for any reason you are driving and you can get to them, you can always feel free to reach out to me or the company, and we will make sure that you get in touch with um, Jacqueline. Jackie, so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the thank show you, and a real. part of the podcast. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks everyone out there for listening. I hope that you pick up the book and get in contact with us and, you know, have a great day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining me and Jackie today for listening to our podcast. If you loved this interview, please share it with your friends and pick up the book. And it goes, uh, it's in shelves on September, 2024. You can also join us by checking out the soul professional society at soulprofessional.com. A soul professional lives in a higher vibration, has an alternative approach for business and is here to help repair the world. So if that sounds like you come check us out at soulprofessional.com. Thanks Jackie, everyone have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.